Hello and welcome back to Test Drive Unlimited 2. This is your host Valamfor here. And today I think we are going to head for another one of the championships. So let's take a look at where they are. We've either got the B4 High Championships to complete, which is over here, or we can head for the A7 High Championships, which is here. And I think we're probably going to go for this one. And we're going to start from here. Turn left. And here we are. You have reached your right. destination. Let's win another championship. What have we got this time? We've got two time trials, three races, one uh, speed trap, and an elimination. So we'll start off with the time trials. Hey there! What drama! Apparently the Wilder brothers are squabbling with Stuart again. The pressure of the competition is really starting to show. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, we will finish off the A7 championships and I think we will start making some headway uh, at the later part of this episode in actually heading towards uh, where the B4 high championship is, just so we don't need to do the travelling in the next episode. Uh, we'll pick that up on the map. And, uh, and then once these two are done, all that's left is the A6 Championship and then the Ibiza Cup and then uh, we will be heading uh, onwards and upwards to a different island altogether Doing too badly. Okay. <coughs> I mean, that 75 millisecond penalty isn't too bad. Oh, excuse me. Feeling quite tired today. Jesus. Okay. Got to speed up a little bit. For some reason, that's uh, something has slowed us down somewhere around here. So I need to concentrate now. I really don't want to have to do this again. Okay, that was a bit better. Some of these corners are really quite hard. Yeah, the game is suddenly picking up in terms of difficulty. Um, it's still relatively easy, but you can see that the difficulty is starting to uh, increase. Well, this one should be in the bag. <coughs> Whee! There we go. Even with the penalty. Fantastic. And we'll continue with another time trial. Ah. 
I haven't really been paying attention to how much money we've got at the moment. For this new timed event, the moment to prove his worth has finally arrived. Um, <clears throat> I'm a little bit annoyed at the moment. Um, the episode I put up uh, yesterday um, had the awesome <laughs> car wash scene right at the very end, um, which was great, and it really fit well with the uh, the music that was in game. Um, and you know, it's it's part of the scene, um, so it's embedded within the scene itself um, I wasn't able to remove the music um, myself at least but uh, as always uploading it and then uh, YouTube gets on its high horse and says that there's content uh, content matched to uh, something else and uh, it picked up on the the music in that one little bit so uh, if you're watching it at a later stage and you think to yourself well hang on uh, you know, I'm, I, I've watched this elsewhere and there was music when I watched it. Um, the reason for that is that I've actually taken, uh, I've used um, the editing software that YouTube actually provides to extract that music. Um, so if you actually want to see the car wash in full effect with the music I'm mentioning, um, best bet is to actually um, search for you know, Test Drive Unlimited 2 car wash um, and see someone else have the car wash scene um, with the music as well because uh, if there's one thing that I'm not gonna let happen um, with my video specifically it's to let some other money-grabbing bastards nick you know the hard work that I'm doing in order to upload these and film them and everything else um, just because you know inside a game there's a tiny bit of licensed music that's been used and uh, you know copyright wise I'm pretty sure uh, and someone can correct me if I'm wrong but I'm pretty sure that the licenses although the music itself is obviously licensed by the, um, the, the studios or publishers or whoever it is that uh, you know look after the um, artists if a games developer purchases the license in order to use it in their game it becomes their license am, am I wrong in thinking that because if that's the case then uh, uh, YouTube need to work on their content match IDs because uh, you know that music is part of the licensed soundtrack of this game we find our competitors at the starting line for what promises it just annoys me race. and if anything you know the game developers have actually come on side um, you know in letting us uh, put um, you know put videos up on YouTube um, of the games themselves they're quite happy it's free advertising for them um, you know and uh, I've really made a bad start on this hang on um, yeah you know they've uh, they're getting free advertising out of us playing these games uh, the least you think they would do is back the um, youtubers creating these videos by saying look you know our game contains this music back off because uh, one uh, almost I guess half the ex fuck off Andrew excuse me um, one <laughs> of the uh, main experiences of this game is that the soundtrack goes really well with the driving um, as no doubt you found out in the first episode but the fact that I've had to now turn it off entirely and uh, you know all you've got to listen to is my dulcet tones um, really th this game deserves you know deserves to be uh, played or at least watched with some form of uh, soundtrack going on in the background so um, but hey 
I, uh, I won't make that mistake a second time. Uh, luckily, uh, when it comes to the Need for Speed series, um, there are a couple of soundtracks which were developed just for the games themselves, and so no one other than the game developer hold the right to that music, so I should be okay for those games particularly. Okay, I do recall this uh, particular race um, always being a problem at the very beginning. So, nice to see that there's no change there. Um, and as I said in that first race, it, you can now see that the difficulty has started to increase, uh, if somewhat. Of course, it could just be the mistakes that I was making at the very early part, but I'm also increasing the uh, number of cars on the road as well, which obviously makes things a little bit trickier. Um, right, we have three checkpoints left. Um, I'm, I don't think it's this race series particularly, but there is one a bit later on where all of a sudden, um, I'm sure everyone's aware of the rubber band effect. Um, you get it a lot in the Need for Speed games where you get way ahead of the competition and all of a sudden they'll just bum rush you from nowhere. There's no way that their car, you know, has gone the speed that it is going, uh, and there's, there was, you know, there's absolutely no way that the car um, could have made that kind of, uh, you know, could have sped up that quickly to catch you up. Absolutely no way. And yet, for some reason, they still managed to do it somehow. And it's a very similar um, race that's coming up, I think where all of a sudden Stuart Wintery in whatever car it is he's driving just ends up getting straight past the rest of you and just rushes you from behind basically um, and it's that race in particular that you have to concentrate on looking behind you more often than not um, to keep an eye out for where he's coming from because you need to block him as soon as he does and uh, excuse me if you can hear banging, but uh, that's the people it's that live above us. Live from Solar Crown and the starting line of this new Speed Trap Challenge. It's time to see which of our competitors has real guts. Yeah. Oh, Tess, piss off. She's annoying me as well getting in my way. Right, okay, we've got an interesting circuit this time for this speed test. So we're already going a little bit quicker than her. We're going to hit four and then one directly afterwards. We're going to swing back round and hit two and then five and then finally hit three. I think that's probably best doing it in that order. I think that's what all the others look like they're going to do as well. Yeah, look, they're all um, they're all copying me. So we're going to hit this one, slow down, and turn. Head down here. We're going to hit five, then swing back round and hit three. Hopefully we can do that from here. Yes, yes we can, good. Fifty, and so far no one's been able to beat my uh, top score on all of these, so that's good. And boom, double figures on, or triple figures, sorry, on this one. Fantastic. Perhaps we might be able to swing round. Nope, there's a bush. <laughs> hey ho. 
I thought we might be able to uh, do a nice little bit of um, drifting there and pick up four at a higher rate, but unfortunately not. Not this time. So, not to worry, we are in first, we hold the lead in all five speed traps, so that works well. And there's no way I'm going to get back in time for one, so we'll leave it here. Awesome. And we're way in the lead. Good, so I think that leaves us with two races. Yeah, two races and then the elimination. And we'll finish with the elimination. Um, I know I'd said actually that we would um, make headway uh, towards the B4 the championship. Line. The final moments of anticipation before this epic confrontation but, um, begins. What surprises will Solar Crown give us this time? Judging by the fact that there are actually seven races on this one. And that elimination is more than likely going to take a little bit of time. Um, we may just have to finish at the end of this A7 championship uh, for today at least. And uh, we'll pick up with the uh, B championship in the next episode, including making our way over there. Um, I don't want to make these episodes too long, as I've been saying previously. Um, Anywhere between 20 and, and 30 minutes is fine, but uh, th there was one that went up just just shy of 40 minutes, um, and that is well, that's a, a lot of time out of someone's day. <laughs> so, I'm rather hoping that uh, uh, on a separate note, with regards to the. Um, um, State of Decay um, Let's Play that I'm doing at the moment that uh, things are actually going to start picking up because um, for me I'm finding it, it it seems to be going a little bit too slowly um, so to be honest guys what I'm probably going to do in that in particular is um, start trying to speed up the um, you know how quickly the storyline missions come along as soon as they do come along I'm gonna drop everything that we're doing and concentrate on progressing the storyline because you know the game gets really quite interesting um, like most games do the further along you progress and right now we're stuck in a teeny town with sorry um, I just <laughs> rubbed the mic um, you know, we're stuck in a teeny town, there's not much in the way of resources, there's not really anything going on that's particularly interesting, and um, we've really got the most out of it that we can do um, without moving on, um, and I don't really want to move to a separate, uh, or a rather a different town until the storyline mission has come along actually asking us to do that, so as I say, I'll try and progress the storyline as much as possible. I was going to say, I don't know if you noticed there, but the red accents around my brakes, that wasn't, um, my, my car doesn't have red accents, that was just that they were hot from the driving. I'm not sure if you saw that. We find our competitors at the starting line for what promises to be an intense race. So, take and make note. Beginning of this race, my see my brake discs are completely or, or wheel discs or whatever they are. I'm, I'm not a mechanic. <laughs> I don't know. They look like brake discs in this in the sides. They're um behind those wheels or the alloys. They are um, completely grey, they're cold. When we finish this race, take a look at the colour of them. That's uh, one of the, again, it's one of the nice little um, features of this game. I call it a feature, you know. Um, I know this wasn't a, a massive success, which is a shame because 
to be honest, I really like it um, as arcade racers go. Um, and by ar arcade, usually what I mean is the likes of you know Need for Speed. You know, the handling is way off um, compared to real life. But um, with this, there was a sense of realism as well. And it's a real shame um, what happened to the um, developers responsible for um, for this game. Uh, they closed down like only a couple of months or uh, maybe uh, about a year after the release of the game um, by Atari because uh, Atari felt that you know it hadn't made enough money. Um, and as I say, it's a real shame because. I was kind of hoping for a Test Drive Unlimited 3 <laughs> um, and in certain circumstances we are actually getting one anyway. Um, we are getting, uh, as I said, The Crew which looks phenomenal, really looking forward to that game. Um, and there's the the other uh, game which again escapes my mind at the moment. It's um, I know it's a PS4 exclusive um, and it's out in the exact same month as the crew, which is ridiculous. Um, I really do wish that uh, certain games developers would uh, kind of look at when other games are being released and think to themselves, well, you know, we're all for competition, but maybe not in the same month, you know, that we want to release. That's just crazy. Um, you see, EA and Battlefield, they got it right. They release a month before the Call of Duty franchise. And that's not me suggesting or uh, saying that the Battlefield franchise is better than the Call of Duty franchise. Um, and in general, for those particular types of shooters, I really think that perhaps they want to think about rebooting the franchise altogether. Call of Duty is going way off into the future. We've got uh, Advanced Warfare, uh, which will be released this year, um, which to me, in my eyes, although yes, I will likely get it. It's um, you know, I think I think we're getting to the realms of it's only going to be a couple more years, and soon we're going to see space combat. You know. Uh, space Warfare, uh, Call of Duty 20, or <laughs> something ridiculous. Um, and you know, where do you draw the line? Perhaps they want to think about releasing a new IP altogether. Um, you know, I, to be honest, there are certain IPs that are really good, and because they keep changing up the um, you know the storylines or the the series. Um, it ends up being fresh. Each game you play in a series is fresh. Zelda, fresh. Um, even Assassin's Creed. The concepts are all the same, but the storyline is always always different. And that is what I like about the Assassin's Creed games. Now they've actually uh, Ubisoft have, have gone on record saying that after I think the next couple of games that's going to be a you know they they are they have a finish for the um, Assassin's Creed series which is a shame but you know all good things must come to an end it's those companies that don't realize that the, the good times have been and gone I mean you only have to look at the ghosts multiplayer to see just how badly butchered it is See now, look. Can you see the red? <laughs> it, it's uh, got the, the red. It's cooling down now. Yeah, that, that's amazing. I love it. Um, okay, so we're just on to the eliminator. Let's get this done. We meet again live at Solar Crown with all your favorite drivers. <clears throat> Miami, the Wilder Brothers, Stewart, they're all here. And we're off. Let's 
Tess. Oh my god, you're gonna pay for that, love. Right. <clears throat> So, spoken a little bit about um, you know certain IPs. Um, I think, actual, in actual fact, um, and again, uh, if anyone disagrees, then you know please leave in the comments. But uh, I'm actually thinking perhaps of doing uh, a Let's Play series of the Assassin's Creed games because they're brilliant. I could quite happily play through those again time and time again. Um, I've played through them once, they're really really good. Um, <clears throat> I'm continuously looking through the Steam catalogue to see if there's anything new or um, you know e even old that's going for a decent rate um, which I think to myself oh yeah I could see myself playing that and I could see it's um, retaining viewer you know uh, views in general. That's the main thing uh, for me is to try and uh, gather as many viewers as possible, uh, and uh, and then retaining those views afterwards. Um, they they always say it's the first year in a channel's life that uh, makes or breaks the channel. So um, uh, considering this is only I think day nine <laughs> I mean I've had my YouTube account for years uh, and I've uploaded a, a few stupid things um, one in particular is uh, of a friend of mine uh, playing Call of Duty Modern Warfare uh, shows how old the video is it's the original Modern Warfare and he had this crazy thing with his uh, mouth where and I think most people get it when they're concentrating really really hard specifically in a video game their tongue comes out they can't help it, you know. We we all have a concentration face, let's say. Uh, <laughs> but um, his is particularly uh, funny since his tongue comes out, and then it tends to fly around his face, <laughs> uh, as you'll probably see if you've watched the video. Um, and uh, yeah, he just looks like a moron. <laughs> but. Um, Oh, it's just funny. But yeah, so uh, might do um, a series of um, the Assassin's Creeds. Um, I played a game ages ago, which was <clears throat> I'm kind of a glutton for punishment, just so everybody knows. So I've played through the uh, Dark Souls and Demon Souls games. I haven't played through the new one yet. I have got it awaiting me on the PS3. Um, I'm not going to go and pick it up on the PC. That's kind of silly. Um, but uh, years ago I played a game on the PlayStation called Knight's Contract. Now that game was hell. Absolute hell. Uh, I'll give you a, a little bit of premise. It was about, as the game title might suggest, a knight, and uh, there goes Miami, and um, he had to, I think, rescue a witch or something similar. She gave him uh, some powers, and you, you know the kind of stories. It was high fantasy, um, but the boss fights, you know, there was no. Um, margin of error at all. You had to do them, like there were button pushes, quick time events, and I'm terrible when it comes at quick time events anyway. I, I just about scrape through on most games. Um, and it's nothing to do with my hand eye coordination. Um, it's just, you know, most of the time there is a significant amount of input lag usually in consoles. You know, you touch a button and nothing happens for you know milliseconds you generally don't notice it um, but I digress these um, fight sequences they were hell and you literally had to push buttons within 
like I say, milliseconds of you seeing the commands on screen. And if you did anything wrong, you, you died. And you had to start the boss fight all over again. Um, or in some cases, you might get a do over. In that, uh, you know, it didn't quite kill your character or something. You had to heal up very, very quickly and then get back into the fight again. And no sooner had you um, remembered one set of buttons that you had to mash, but uh, all of a sudden they would change up the buttons that you needed to hit. Um, yeah, don't get me wrong, it was a brilliant game, but uh, I think they made it somewhat harder than it needed to be, and that was just on the normal setting. I never went through again uh, and played it on the, I think, Knight's difficulty. I really don't think I would have had the patience for it. So uh, if you want to see what I'm talking about, uh, YouTube search the game called Knight's Contract uh, and take a look at some of the boss battles. They are ridiculous. Um, that is definitely a game that I will not be showing on my channel. And boom. There we go. That's the A7 Championship done. Hoo-ha. Couldn't top it. Today, our new challenger was definitely the stronger of the two. Well, there you go. We have beaten the A7 championships. So, that's awesome. Um, I just want to see before we leave today whether this guy has no he doesn't okay never mind just ignore me um, this guy has got the Chevrolet Camaro which we will need for the a6 championship I have decided to go for the Camaro just because I love that car so much um, and uh, we will finish off by coming here and seeing what the photographer has to say for himself Hi, pleasure to meet you. Okay, let me explain my project to you. I want to do a picture book on Ibiza, capturing images of the most beautiful places on the island. Your job is to find those spots and take snapshots. I hired a guy, but all the pictures he took were out of focus. They all need to be reshot. Consult the photo album to see them. You may just be able to work out where they were taken. Don't forget to follow the requested conditions. By the way, I've also opened an agency in Hawaii. Don't hesitate to drop by if you're in the neighborhood. Hi there. Um, your bum's showing. <laughs> yeah, great. Okay, so um, that's what it's all about then. It was uh, he'd already hired a photographer, but he's got out of focus, um, out of focus uh, things. Like, I mean, look at this one. The guy has a his finger in the way. Um. The problem is, is that we have these uh, destinations to find now, but they don't show up on the map. You have to physically drive by memory, find the, uh, an area that says, you know, take a photo here, and you go, oh right, okay, this is where it wants me to take a photo. So, we shall take a look at that and the B, uh, B4 championship uh, in the next episode. So if you've liked this one, guys, please uh, leave us a like. Uh, and as always, if you can comment and subscribe, that really helps out. Uh, enjoy those meals. Thanks and good night. Much love. I'll see you in the next episode. Take care. See you later, guys. Bye.